Uh, my name is George Elliott Clark. Uh, right now it's uh, still 2013, the very end of 2013. Uh, and this year is important to me because it's now been 30 years since I've been publishing uh, collections of poetry. And in fact, Traverse is my 13th collection of poetry. Uh, on July 1, 2005, 30 years into trying to be a poet, I was visiting Halifax, Nova Scotia, again, my home city with my daughter, and decided I would write a long poem that day, on the, only on that day, July 1, 2005, to celebrate for myself 30 years of trying to be a poet. Uh, the, the stanzas are meant to be spoken aloud, and, and uh, I'm also re referring to, of course, the um, African-American Caribbean uh, musical form of rap. And I'm also thinking of the idea of rhapsodic, and the idea, the Greek idea of the rhapsode. So all those ideas are embedded with the idea, within this notion of these being rap sonnets. So I wrote 61 uh, uh, rap sonnets in one day. This is the very first uh, part of Traverse, and it's uh, simply titled One, Number One. What was handed down was back talk, nasty Nova Scotian stuff, black and insolent, an A to Z menagerie of brain or caterwauling script, crying out loud, cryptic adorations, Christ and curry and quaint, not only in that order, via a hodgepodge of fountain pens, one quixotic, the rest antique, straggling ink between wisps of lines, letting letters light dead on, biting into paper. This next one, number five, just talks about some of the uh, African American poets, especially, who are very important to me as a teen writer gr growing up in Halifax. Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia, I should say. Number five, I ain't forgotten Henry Dumas, Conrad Kent Rivers, Robert Hayden, or Gene Toomer. I ain't forgotten their deep south yells, their harmonious harmonies. Their pages unfurled as thin as moonshine. You tip one of their poems and it tips you over. Their words float just like Mary Poppins, but sting just like Muhammad Ali. Suddenly, Queen Elizabeth's English turns negroid, mongoloid, dawdling, and lavish in the mouth. Now you realize that carving poems means finessing, born again, now deathless trees. This is number 15. I dubbed that stubby, chubby, fedored, fogey, hogging the corner of Manor and Canard, a stogie, boogieing in his choppers, the dictator of Old Spice. That actual roller of nasty, stinky cigars, as if he were the chairman of funereal, unreal Halifax. Simultaneously, oh, morphed into Layla, O'Ree's, oh, drawn by Derek and the Dominoes, and erased me like obscene sidewalk chalk. What else could I do but go underground, mime, authentic B.B. King howls, weep, darkly behind dazzling mirror shades. Yeah, this is number 34. So, lightning could father rainbows, right? One night in Bigby rain punctured my brother's roof while my voice funneled down an unctuous phone line trying to tunnel into Ms. Lady's heart. But she was laughing. I was failing. Our love was truly gone as lightning. Man, her wrong words hurt my throat like I was draining absinthe. Every original thought leapt and pulsed with clean blood. Now, the only rainbows fathered were black ink and black vinyl 45s. Rainbows of spilled gasoline oozing, then catching 
like a cold or napalm. So this is number uh, 66, and it refers to my late father. His will was his diary, 1959, for George, so he will understand. That year, thanks to his desires, unbound, I gestated in my mama's womb. But he'd been in love with a different woman and was loving different women, a finesse that his motorcycle zen encouraged, from Halifax to Harlem to Hochelaga, plus his railway job also let him make tracks. To skip to Moncton once romances went morbid and put away the purple bike and pick up paints and make art and make good money. But once born, I was dying, so Grammy telephone, come see your son before he's dead. The last one, number 70, <laughs> number 70, in ivory tower black, I got an ink chalk up essays, see directions home, identifying Africadians, but a Nordic muse reclines inside illicit sonnets, a book of the year, insists the UK guardian, issuer also of Ed Snowden's hitty confessions. Venezia published my verses in Dante's tongue, and so I've enjoyed quaffing a lot of punt a mess. Lasso the wind, Aurelia's verses and other poems is fresh out. Children's lyrics writ by a uh, Harvard prof, just visiting, but also the poet laureate of Toronto, appointed partly by mayor, admittedly crazed on crack. I'll pause here. I pray for increase of love and to justify my epic canticles, and the novels, but Ecclesiastes 12 owns the last word.